Mixing with Mike plugin of the week comes from the Plugin Alliance. It's the Amec Mastering Compressor. This is an emulation of the George Massenberg Labs 8900 Mastering Grade VCA Compressor. Uh, it is a very cool, amazing sounding compressor designed to be very transparent, not adding any sort of tonal color. Um, but it has a very unique approach to the compression and it makes it valuable in a digital situation as it would as much in an analog mastering situation. And that's why I think it's worth a review and having a closer look at. Uh, the way that it works is it primarily functions from three detection circuits. So when the signal comes in, it analyzes it and creates a logarithmic scale of some sort uh, to divide out three basic components of the signal. The peak signal, right? So that's the obvious one that'll be your primary kick and snare hits. Uh, there will be a fast signal. So those will be other transients that aren't quite so sharp. Maybe there are other instruments in the mix that sort of hit, but a little bit softer, but they do create a peak. Uh, and then there is slow, which is the RMS energy. So what happens is, is that those three detector circuits and the settings that you have here allow you to adapt them and the way that they all blend together to tell the VCA circuit how to apply gain or gain reduction to the signal. So it's a unique approach. And actually when you kind of grasp it or, don't, or understand basically the way that it works, it's a really incredibly powerful compressor. So I want to demonstrate it here for you. Primarily, uh, let's just kind of go over the graphic user interface and then we'll do, you know, we'll dive into some of the more specific settings. So essentially we have an in and out uh, if everything is linked together. Uh, this can operate in stereo. You can also operate it in mid-side mode if you prefer to do it that way. Uh, you can operate an external side chain. Okay. Um, there are the primary controls that you're adjusting are here. Uh, there's a threshold. It can act in one of two ways because there's two primary modes or ways that this operates. One is a soft, um, a soft knee and the other is a hard knee compression, which is every other ratio other than the soft setting. So we'll start with the soft setting, but that's the basic. And then what you have here, these four controls allow you to control the three different detectors. There's one specific to the peak energy. There's one specific to the fast or sort of soft transient energy. And then the other settings adapt the RMS energy to um, trigger based on, on the settings of the fast um, uh, detector set here. So we'll get into that. Um, when you operate it in uh, out of soft knee with a ratio, then it becomes a hard knee and this threshold becomes a little bit more 1176 like in that you're driving gain into a kind of semi fixed threshold. The threshold will actually change um, based on the ratio. It'll actually lift a little bit higher. This is a very common thing that happens. You see it a lot, specifically in 1176, as you switch to the higher ratios, it also sort of lifts the threshold. So you get a very similar gain reduction when you go between the different ratios. So there's an intelligence there behind it. Uh, there is an output control for make up or make down gain, because if you're driving input level up, you're going to maybe need to pull output gain down unless you're doing super heavy gain reduction. Um, and then there are some features here, which were added in there are a little bit independent of what were from the original unit. The headroom control is really cool. Uh, this is not on the original, but what this does is it allows you once you set or get your compression sort of operating the way that you want between, between the control of the three detector circuits, you can adapt it relative to all of that, maintaining those exact settings. And all it does is it's either driving more input and balancing the output by the same amount or the other way around where it's taking away input level and driving more output level. So you get less gain reduction, more or less gain reduction. So it's all a relative thing. Um, there's also the detection circuit in the original was sort of fixed it combined the left and right signal. Some stereo compressors would actually just use the left channel, um, which can sometimes give you uneven results because there may be information in the right channel that's, that's triggering differently or would trigger differently. Um, but here they've added in a feature um, that again is unique to this where you can adapt it away to zero to make it completely independent or anything in between. And you can also operate it off the average signal level instead of operating it off the uh, peak energy, so which is also kind of cool. So um, essentially what it's doing as set up here is it's combining the left and right signal into the detection engine 
and then that is what applies the gain reduction and then you could separate it out to whatever percentage or degree you want very cool added feature this side is the same as this side um, so you can monitor uh, what the difference is so what's being compressed monitor just that signal um, there is a whole sidechain filter section it could be independent for the left and right you can set it up so in auto mode it will automatically monitor monitor the sidechain signal as you're making an adjustment on it but as soon as you let go it goes back to the full frequency regular audio signal it's passing through which is kind of cool uh, and then there's a latch mode which keeps it in so that you're only listening to the sidechain signal um, and then you have to shut it off all right so there's a couple options there high pass filter mid-range eq and a uh, high frequency uh, shelf bell uh, and all of that right so you get to choose there so you have plenty of ways of adapting or adjusting it if you're getting like too much low frequency energy uh, holding the sustain too long that type of thing then there is the whole added engine here which you could get rid of here or this if you want um, and this is the whole TMT thing. So you go through all the different things of that. There's a separate input and output gain control. There's a VCA clip mode. This allows you to drive or clip the VCA. Uh, I haven't played around with, a lot with that. Um, linking parameters, that's just for left, right, all of that sort of stuff. And then you have stereo width and mono maker controls here as well as a correlation meter. One other thing, a couple other things, and this is kind of part of the original. There's a couple other meters here that are worth taking note of. This one is a unique meter, which will show uh, gain reduction and it will show your output signal. So there's a sort of bright green uh, thing here in the middle. And, and if, if your, your signal is lower than the input signal, it would go lower. If it's higher, it would go higher. And so you could adjust your output and just sort of average it around zero. And it's a, like a visual way of kind of getting you to unity gain. And then off of that will spin your gain reduction. So you'll actually be able to see the gain reduction kind of moving off of that and so that moving target kind of thing it's a really cool meter once you get used to it this is an addition which is something that you don't do not see in the original and this is what really makes this super cool to me because um, what it will show you is exactly what is happening and what elements of the detector circuit are more active only one is really particularly active at a time. And so you'll see a metering here as I feed signal in that will show either peak in red, fast in yellow, or green, which is the uh, slow or RMS signal. And so it'll show you which one of those is actually triggering the game reduction and the way that they all kind of weave together is what happens here. All right, so let's get to some audio examples. I'm going to start with something simple, which is just a drum beat and bass, just so we can uh, go through and just a quick demonstrate so you can understand what's going on here. So as I adjust the threshold, you'll notice that these kind of move down. And what you're going to see are three colored lines that pass through here. The green one, again, being the slow RMS energy signal, red being peak, yellow being the fast uh, setting which is the sort of uh, soft transients that occur right in front of the RMS signals all right so I'm going to play here just notice the signals here and I'm going to lower the threshold and you could see basically how it's working Right, so because I'm, I'm not really activating here the peak or fast energy, you're seeing only green. So that green above threshold is what would be giving me the compression right there. As I start to bring these up here, so if I bring up the peak, you'll see the red peaks popping above. Right, and so now that peak energy will be what's triggering the signal. And you'll see that kick in when it's taking over for the RMS signal. Then we have the fast, which is the other one. So when you when you actually look at the real unit itself, it has three LEDs that will give you those things. And so they will light up according to which circuit that you're using. So essentially what you're doing with these is you're you're shaping the way 
that the signal is being compressed, right? So there's a couple of there are a couple of things here that that sort of factor in. So the first thing you'll notice that compresses is the RMS signal, right? Usually there you will feed in at least some fast if not peak signal the fast and the slow are connected so in other words because there's a timing control the timing control is basically transitioning it's it's setting the attack and release either fast or the attack and release slow now and it does so for the rms signal and for the fast um, detector circuit so what that means is that if I set it like this, it's going to give me a faster attack and release for the fast setting, and it's going to make the RMS signal slightly faster. So what happens is, is that the way that this works is that the fast circuit will give you a certain attack and release. The release transitions, that is the transition for the attack of the slow signal, and then the release time is the rest of what happens here and with the hysteresis control which I'm going to explain. So I'm going to bring in some fast signal just so you can see it, and I'm going to show you how this will change both the shape and speed of the RMS and the peak and the fast signal. All right, so just so you basically understand, so you see as I go slower here, right, the green one is still fairly slow, okay? But as I increase it here, you could see how they start to become the same at some point, all right? So uh, so that's part one. Now, the hysteresis control allows you to uh, control this relative, so it allows you to control the release curve of the slow part of the release. So we're basically dealing with three stages of attack and release <laughs> and the way that they transition between each other right so um so we're working with these two together so if i have this i can now make the green one go faster Right, and what you'll hear in this case is you're, you'll hear the signal being triggered here with the with the uh, yellow with the fast setting. So that's the soft transient, not the hard transient uh, or peak signal. So that's triggering the compression. The um, the slower one has a release curve which I can set, which I can set it to be slow, or I can make it fast to sort of chase this. And what'll happen is this will make things sound smoother. This will make them pump and breathe a bit more. And so what I'm doing here with the timing control is I'm shaping the way that this transitions into this, and then this I can either speed up or slow down. <laughs> okay, so pretty much when you're using it, you're starting with some combination of these two the vast majority of the time. The P control is something that you can throw on top of that, which will capture or catch things that are coming um, up higher. This is probably not a lot in this, but in some materials you may have like certain snares or certain elements that stick out at different times in the production, and this would be there to sort of capture those. And then I can balance the gain.
So this is on, on the actual compressor, this is what's called crest factor. And these two knobs are, uh, they are one wraps around the other. So the two controls you kind of work with together. And what it does is it, it sets the crest factor, right? The difference between the peak and the RMS energy. So as you crank this up, you're decreasing that distance. You're decreasing the dynamic range. Now the head headroom control here allows you to work relative within that, right? So now I can make this have less gain reduction or more gain reduction, right? So that gives me a lot of control, right? The ability to control peaks, the ability to sort of create the basic rhythmic flow, right? Um, adjusting the release and the way that the initial fast attack uh, or fast detection circuit kind of works relative, right, to the RMS detection. So essentially, where we're getting, we're just cascading layers of game reduction, right? The peak being faster, etc. So that's the basic sound here and then obviously you can adapt and adjust and put in sidechain filters and all of those sort of things you can run an external sidechain if you want to etc 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 uh there is also now this is in soft compression mode the way soft compression mode works just uh, effectively when you set the threshold it's a soft knee that's where one to one would start and then the compression gets progressively uh, the ratio gets progressively higher as you go farther above the threshold. So it's meant to be, in, the, in this manual, they kind of describe it like as a comparison to like a Veramu compressor. Opto compressors operate in a very similar way. Tape compression operates in a similar way. As you push in, drive into it more, it becomes increasingly resistant. And therefore, that would effectively be like a higher ratio. Okay. Now, if we operate it in ratio mode here, we're going to end up bringing our gain down, right? Because it'll immediately add gain in. So as we're driving input gain, you could see this move, right, as I'm doing it. So now as I'm pushing gain into a fixed threshold, I may have make down gain here just to sort of make it all fly. So let's, let's start with this, keeping the same settings that we have here. Now, what will happen here, you'll notice, like, I'm going to change the ratio. Um, you can see, though, that the ratio going from, like, 1 to 1, and I think the original starts at 1.5 to 1, uh, if I remember off the top of my head. But you'll notice that most of the ratios are fairly light through the majority here, like 4 to 1 appears at the 1 o'clock position, and then it will go all the way to a brick wall, right, infinity to 1, right? So real hard limiting here if you need that. Um, I think you get most of what you need just from the peak um, uh, game reduction circuit here. But, you know, if you really just want to crush something, the ability to do so is in there as well. Now you'll notice that the threshold, this is moving upward as I increase ratio. And, and the idea behind that is is sort of a, a design that's sort of old school. Like I said, with an 1176, if you go between the different settings, there are different knees for each of the ratio buttons. As you go up with each of them, they become a progressively harder knee, but they also, the threshold actually goes up higher. So you end up with very similar amounts of game reduction in the end. Um, similar idea, although you're getting, you know, more gain output, so you have to sort of compensate. If I was working on the hardware, I'd be adjusting the output control at the same time as adjusting the ratio just to sort of keep it balanced so it could get the basic vibe or sound of what I wanted. But everything is an understanding the, the relationship between all of these. 
Um, my my in terms of starting out with this fresh, essentially, if you think of it this way, you want to start start with everything down, maybe even start with the released hysteresis off. Um, you know, whether you decide to operate here in in a hard knee mode or whether you decide to go into a soft knee mode, that's that's fine. If you go there, you know, bring your input gain down, drive the signal in and just at least get something started with the fast, get the timing correct, okay? Balance out the relationship of the RMS or slow signal to the fast detection circuit, right? So just quickly, I'll just do it right here. Now, now set my timing. And then control the relative hysteresis here, which will make, I can uh, make the release time of the uh, slow detection circuit faster. Adapt my output gain. And then decide whether I want to do any peak reduction. And obviously, I need to adapt a lot of the settings once you start to add in the rest of the music in. But you get the basic idea. Really super powerful uh, uh, compressor. Uh, very unique design. And I think uh, it doesn't take... It, it's a little bit hard to kind of get through the fundamentals of how the three detect detection circuits sort of work and how they operate together. Uh, but when you get the basics of it, it's uh, really uh, a super powerful uh, limiter compressor. And um, yeah, I mean, based on um, your knees, it can be used in a million different ways. 
using something like this just on single tracks like vocals is amazing. Um, I used to use the 8900 a lot more that way than I did on the mix bus because I worked on a lot of SSLs, so I was more into the uh, compressor on the SSL uh, for most of the projects that I worked on. Um, so you can use it for that. You can use it for things just like individual drum subgroups, uh, guitar subgroups. It works great with you know pretty much any kind of thing where you need sort of a transparent compression that gives you a lot of that control of the total of the dynamics, right? The RMS signal, the sort of soft peak and the peak energy. Um, really, really super cool one. All right, so uh, there you have it. Plugin of the week uh, from Plugin Alliance, the AMEC Mastering Compressor. Check it out.